All right, let's cut to the chase. You want to buy a new camera and I want to help you do that. So let's go. What's up? My name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer. I'm based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings. Uh, on the video side, I do a lot of sports. I do a lot of reels and events and uh, a lot of dynamic stuff. Recently, I picked up the Canon R5, not the R5 Mark II, the R5, and it was a swap that I did with a buddy of mine. I had the Lumix S52X, and I was reaching some limitations with that camera on the photography side, while he was reaching some limitations with his setup on the video side. So we decided to do a swap. So this is actually my first video uh, that I'm recording with it, and this is my second time recording it because the first time I blew it. So we're just gonna go super quickly through how I would go about trying to buy a new camera if I was somebody who was buying maybe my first camera or I haven't bought a new camera in a really long time. What makes me qualified to tell you anything here? Well, I don't know, I'm a guy on YouTube. So that's enough, right? Yeah, no, uh, I, I am a working photographer and videographer, but also I did work for uh, some time at a camera store. And so I helped a lot of people kind of decide what they were gonna do with their camera setup. People would come in with like hugely different, um, you know, variations in their knowledge and in their understanding of photography and videography. And it was my goal uh, to help them get something that actually worked for them. What I thought I'd do is I would take you through my basically three steps that I took all the customers through to try and decide what kind of camera would work for them when they were coming in with a pretty much like clear palette. Step number one is to decide on a budget. Uh, if you don't know what your budget is, then you're not gonna make an informed decision. So decide how much you wanna spend and factor into that things like how much you wanna spend, including tax and any accessories you might need. So if you wanna get, you know, you'll need a lens for your camera. So deciding on like what lens you might need based on the photography you're doing, uh, things like uh, memory cards, batteries, you know, straps, bags, all those like little accessories, they, they do add up. So I would say come up with a budget and make sure that it includes all of those things so that you can still afford to actually go and shoot once you've bought the camera. Step number two, decide on a use case. Is this gonna be a photography only, a video only, or a hybrid camera? How are you gonna be using it? Most cameras these days are gonna do a good job of being hybrid, but there's definitely some cameras that are geared more towards photography, like the one I'm using, or more towards video, like the one that I traded. Part B to that is to decide uh, sort of roughly what you think you wanna shoot. If you have a good idea that like for sure you wanna be shooting uh, portraits, for example, or sports or wildlife or events, uh, that's good to know when you're deciding on a camera. Most cameras will do everything pretty well, but definitely there are cameras that are specialized. So decide roughly what it is you wanna shoot and, and help that to in, inform where you're gonna go uh, from there. Step number three, and this is one that I had a lot of conversations with people at the camera store, and that was deciding on need to haves and nice to haves. Need to haves are things that the camera absolutely has to have if you are going to purchase it. And nice to haves are things that like, you know, it'd be great to have this, but it's not the end of the world if I don't. Uh, it would be like a nice quality of life upgrade, but it's not absolutely integral to me using the camera. And what's nice is those things are gonna be very much informed by step number two, which is your use case, right? So if you have a strong use case and you know what you wanna do, you're gonna be better at deciding the need to haves versus the want to haves or the nice to have. Things that fall into this category are things like autofocus performance, weather sealing, IBIS, dual memory card slots. On the video side, things like, like 4K 120 no crop or um, maybe open gate assist tools like uh, like vector scopes and waveforms and stuff like that. If this is too in the weeds for you, that's fine. Uh, but basically run through what cameras can do and decide what of those things are really necessary for you. Once you've done that, you have a fairly good idea of what you're looking for. You can narrow things down quite a bit. I'm gonna take you through a really fast example of how easy this can be and how you can remove some of the emotion and excitement about say brand new cameras like the R5 Mark II that trust me, I want versus uh, the R5, which is something that will absolutely suffice for everything I need to throw at it. So here's our example. Let's say I have $2,000 plus tax that I wanna spend. I would prefer to buy new or use from a reputable place where I can get a, uh, a warranty of some sort and where I can return things. So that's my budget. I know for sure I'm gonna want to have at least one lens, um, probably two, but we'll start with one lens. And for me, 
I love to shoot portraits. So if I'm gonna shoot portraits and I want a good camera with one lens and I wanna spend $2,000 plus tax. So what are my need to haves versus my nice to haves? Uh, the, the need to haves for me in this scenario would be decent autofocus performance. I think when you're shooting portraits, especially if you're doing environmental stuff or events, you wanna have autofocus you can rely on. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna be able to trust it enough that um, it, it gets out of the way. At least that, that's what I like. And then from there, you can always shoot manual if you want to. And, and I do that all the time too with some older lenses, but it's really nice to have the ability to trust your autofocus when you need to. For portraits, I like to have a decent megapixel count. I, I don't prefer to shoot on something that's like 12 megapixels. I would rather be at a higher resolution, not because it's absolutely necessary, but just because it provides some, some more latitude, I find, when I'm editing. And, and I just, I like the look. So it doesn't have to be crazy, but I would say above 20, let's say 24 megapixels is a good place to kind of sit and anywhere above from there that I can afford is great. Uh, but I wouldn't say that that's the most important factor, but I want that as my minimum. So I've, I've made that decision. Next, I want it to be an interchangeable lens camera. So I for sure want to be able to swap lenses out. So that's just something that's gonna rule out some of the point and shoots or some of the fixed lens cameras that are super cool, but maybe not right for me. Talking about you. X106, but I do want you. I would like you. Come by sometime, let's take some photos together. Lastly, I would say a need to have for me is a viewfinder. I, I like using a viewfinder. I don't use it 100% of the time, but it's important to me that I have a good quality viewfinder. I don't want it to be absolute trash, um, but the quality is less important than just simply having one is very, very important. And then nice to have, I would say like IBIS, you know, in-body image stabilization is nice to have. It, it helps to get to some slower shutter speeds. Um, things like weather sealing is nice to have. It's not absolutely essential, uh, but it does depend. In this scenario, let's pretend it's not totally essential for what I do. And the last thing is dual card slots. This is one that, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world, but the second you start charging for your work, you want to be shooting on dual card slots because you're making the decision for you and for your client. And I guarantee the client would rather have redundancy. So we have our list. We know what we need. We want to spend $2,000 mainly for portraits. We want to be able to get a nice, let's say 50 mil lens along with it. We want to have dual card memory slots. Um, we want to be able to have decent autofocus and at least 24 megapixels. So type that into B&H, see what you find and go from there. Uh, there's a ton of options, but when I start to filter things down through my list, it actually brings up only a few. Here's the ones that kind of landed for me that I think makes sense. I got the Sony a7 III, bit of an older camera, but still an absolutely super capable camera for its price. We've got the Fujifilm X-T5, which is an APS-C crop camera, but absolutely gorgeous, beautiful colors, really fun to handle, a very nice like kind of mechanical analog experience to shoot with. And then finally, I would say we have the Lumix S5 II. Those are the cameras that I think kind of fit the bill when it comes to the price point. And also we want lots of flexibility with lens choices. Now I'm down to two. I've got the Sony a7 III and the Fujifilm X-T5. From here, there's some style choices that you need to make and some quality of life choices you need to make. But you're down to two cameras from the hundreds of cameras that there could be. Now maybe you would have made this same list and you would have picked some different cameras. But for me, these were the cameras that would make sense. Now I can go to my local camera shop. I can test out these cameras. I can try them and I can focus in. Sure, there might be other awesome cameras that have really cool things, but I can keep focused and I can make sure that I'm getting the best camera for me, removing the emotion and excitement of all these new cameras and the gear acquisition syndrome and all that crap that gets in the way of buying the right camera for you. So let me know what you think. This is my three-step process. This is how I decide on what I need out of a camera and how I remove emotion. And it stopped me from buying some cameras that absolutely don't work for me. It doesn't mean it's gonna be 100% perfect. You might still find once you start using the camera, like, hey, I didn't really realize this was gonna be an issue, but, but hey, you're, you're closer than you were before. So uh, I would say, give this a shot. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. If you get down to two or three cameras you're deciding between, leave a comment, let me know. I'd love to, to help you out with the information I have, at least as someone who uses a lot of different cameras and, and has helped a lot of people along the way too. So thank you so much. Appreciate you watching. Peace.